Uh, not that fresh. Not that fresh, but... Uh, actually, I'm, I'm getting a freshie on Wednesday. But it's close. Hope everyone's doing good. Um, just wanted to go over some things in this webinar that I think are extremely important and things that um, I found very... Uh, monumental in my transformation as a trader so there's some things that you know are a uh, little redundant and you hear occasionally but there's you know there's some things that people overlook and don't realize and um, kind of just things that once you look back you know hindsight's always 2020 but once you look back and you realize the things that you kept doing over and over and over um, that just dug you into a hole or didn't help you excel or grow or learn. Um, that's really the the main thing that, um, you know, I really have come to notice looking back. It's just if I could have gotten some guidance and some direction and, and uh, a little bit earlier on had learned what really was important in this game, um, it, it really could have saved a lot of time. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hop into just a few topics of um, you know, some basic things on what causes traders to fail as that's the topic of this webinar, but there's one main thing I want to go over. You might've heard it before or not called the cycle of doom. Um, it's not so much of your knowledge and technical analysis and indicators and charts and all that stuff. It's more so your, um, mentality, your routine, your approach, and, uh, really the psychological discipline side of trading, which is, you know, nine out of 10 times what's going to kill people in this game. Um, you, you know, you can teach basic technical analysis to anybody and most of the professional traders you'll meet out there use basic analysis to trade. Um, they've just learned their styles, learned their rhythms, learned their risk management and, uh, have been able to be disciplined psychologically, emotionally, and, um, you know, play their trades out according to their plan and not according to their emotions. So, um, I really just want to focus on that today, guys. So, I'm going to go ahead and, and if any of you guys have done my webinars before, you know, I don't have a script. I don't have a, you know, exact flow I follow with anything. I, I kind of just go off the top and take questions and, um, you know, just show that this is just real knowledge, not a written down script that I came on here to, to read and, and just teach you guys some bull crap. I'm going to teach you out of the experiences that I've had. So, um, first and foremost, one of the main things, obviously, with, uh, the key determiner between someone who's successful in trading and somebody who's an amateur um, can't get over break even or they're losing money constantly. Uh, that's that's number one is going to be having a plan. You know, you hear that everywhere. You see that everywhere. Um, it's just like with small businesses, with anything else in life. If you have a plan and you have goals and you have it all written down, an exact strategy to follow, it works. Um, in trading, that's huge because you know if you have a plan to follow, you have an exact formulation to go by. And when you have your emotions kicking in because you're in a trade and you're um, in profit, it hasn't quite hit your take profit, but um, you know you see you're up $100, you don't want it to go against you and lose all that, so you cash out your position and then you, know, you take your $50 win instead of letting it play out to your stop loss. Or you know your stop loss is about to get hit and you really like the setup, you're so anchored to the belief that it's going to go your direction that you pull your stop loss farther away. Because, you know, it's, a, it's bound to turn around and go in your favor soon. And then what's it do? It stops you out for a $200 loss instead of a $100 loss. Um, there's a number of different things that when you don't have a plan and you don't have a system, your emotions will take over and they will win every time. Um, that's this fear, the greed, everything else that comes into trading. And um, having a plan, having a set of rules to follow is going to stop you from having your emotions take over when you're in the trades. So when you plan your trade before you enter the markets, you set your take profits, your stop loss, what's the trigger to get you into the trade? What are you looking for? Um, you don't have much emotions at that point because you're not in the trade yet. You're just thinking about the trade. Maybe you have a pending order there setting it up, but you know, you're not emotionally attached to it yet because it's not live. The second that trade goes live, the second you're in the actual trade, if you don't have a plan, all bets are off because your emotions are going to destroy you. 
right? Once your money is live and ticking and on on the map when you're live in a trade, if you don't have a set rules to follow, maybe that one time you'll make a good decision, but over time you will not make good decisions and you will just do nothing but destroy yourself and your trading. Um, so number one most important thing with the, the you know layout of trading is to have a plan. You have to have a plan. Um, it can be a basic, it can be intense, it can be whatever, but you have to start with something to work with and build off of. And then as you trade and demo and back test and live trade, um, you see how it performs and you see what does and doesn't work. Um, another thing is uh, risk management. You know, Aside from having a plan, you could be the best trader in the world, have the best strategy in the world. If you have poor risk management, you're not going to go anywhere as a trading. Um, that being said, the opposite. I've seen people that barely know anything about trading and don't even know what their strategy is, but they have great risk management and they're break even or a little below break even trader. Um, so risk management can really, really, really go a long ways. Uh, FXCM before the whole scandal and everything with them happened, uh, they did a study in, I want to say 2014 or 2015, um, over millions of trades from their retail broker accounts from their traders. And um, over half the trades their traders placed were winning trades. So over 50% of the trades placed were winners. But if you looked at the size of the losers versus the size of the winners, the losers were drastically bigger. So what that's saying is people are letting stops, letting losses run a lot longer than they're letting winners run. Um, so that all comes down to risk management. You know, there's a lot that goes into the variable when, when you close a trade, whether it's a winner or a loser. But um, if you're closing out bigger losses than your wins, you're never going to succeed. You have to ensure that your plan takes into account having bigger wins than losses. One and a half to one, two to one, three to one, four to one. There's a number of different ratios of risk to reward that you can implement, but you have to ensure that you are um, following a positive risk to reward ratio. You want to have your winners bigger than your losers. On top of that, you want to have consistency in your position sizes. You don't want to be jumping all over the place with how much you risk in a trade. Um, you want to have a consistent number. That's why we have a consistent percentage risk we have for every trade we, we take, right? One to three percent, two to five percent, um, somewhere in that range. I recommend nowhere is more than one to three percent of your overall account per one trade, right? If you have a um, hundred dollar account, you risk three dollars a trade with three percent risk per trade. So yeah, George, exactly. Two is a great number. Two is a perfect number. I love two. Um, but you risk you, you risk the right amount per trade. If you, if you don't, then maybe you win an awesome trade and, and you risk 2% of your account and you have a two to one risk to reward, you win a 4% trade. And then you're all excited in the next trade you place, you feel real confident. So now you're gonna risk 10% of your account. Um, you enter your trade, you risk 10% and now you just blew three times what you just won. And now, now you have a huge loss after a really good win because your risk to reward is just not in place. So um, risk to reward is another massive thing that really, really, really dictates whether you're going to succeed or not in trading. Um, another thing is, is, you know, journaling and documenting your trades. I have tons of content on, on all of these individual topics, but uh, journaling, if, if you're not journaling your trades and keeping track and keeping score, <clears throat> there's no way of going back and analyzing to determine what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, um, how to, you know, base more of your plan on your strengths, how to eliminate your weaknesses and build a plan around weeding out your weaknesses. Um, if you're not journaling and properly going back and diving into your trades and dissecting what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right, um, there, there's really just, you're just handcuffing yourself. You're not allowing yourself to grow and improve. If you are constantly journaling everything from your emotional state before, after, during trades, your screenshots of your charts before trades and after trades, you wanna know your average hold time. How long is your average trade that you're in? What's your average pips per trade that you make? Your average loss, your average target uh, profit in, in dollars, loss in dollars. All these things come from journaling and keeping track. You can use an automated tool like MyFX Book or FX Blue or something of that nature, but at the end of the day, um, you need a very in-depth journal and you need to be going back and analyzing it. You have to be going over your results, have to be. There's just, there's really no way to succeed in this. And I know that for years when I was learning how to trade, um, 
I heard people like myself say this kind of stuff all the time. You know, you have to journal, you have to have a strategy, you have to have a plan, you have to have risk management. And I still would go day by day just trading whatever looked good, um, not calculating my exact position size, and not taking great journals. Or for a while, I would journal like crazy. I would journal every little detail. But I would never go back and look at the, the journals that I wrote and the, and the trades that I took and the reasoning for them and why they lost and how much I could have won if I did this, how much I would have lost if I did that. And um, honestly, that like in itself, looking back at it, like what, what, what was I thinking? Why am I wasting all this time making a journal if I'm not going to use it, if I'm not going to put it into effect and look over what am I doing wrong? What am I doing right? Most importantly, what am I doing right and what's working? You know, if, if you notice you're, you're playing breakouts and of the last 10 you took, you want a bigger sample size if you're testing a strategy than 10 trades. But um, if, you, if you have uh, 10 trades and you realize of those 10 trades, five were winners, three were losers, two were break even. Um, or let's say the other way around, three were winners, five were losers, two were break even. And then you realize most of the winners were when there was, let's say, in the overall direction of the trend. So then. If you harp on that strength in that sample size and now weed out any of those breakout positions you were taking that wasn't in the direction of the trend, now your next sample size, you could realize that, okay, now I have the five wins, three losses, and two break-evens. So now you just added two extra winners that were losses just by simply looking back at your journal and seeing what worked and what didn't work, right? So... Um, you know, journaling is massively important and making sure you're taking down the right information, but which is just equally as important as that is you have to actually look at your journal. You have to dive into it. Make it a, okay, every Sunday, you guys all know, everybody in here can attest to how hype you are before the market's open on Sunday, right? You know, the weekend's coming to an end. Um, if you got a normal Monday to Friday job, you might be like, shit, it's Monday tomorrow, I'm back to work, but um, anyone that trades Sundays is like, finally, the markets are opening back up and I can get back to it. Um, and I know you're antsy. You're sitting there all day Sunday waiting for that, that market to open. Um, and you're sitting there just waiting. You know, you check the charts probably 18 times throughout the day just waiting. You know, um, Throw in every Sunday a half hour, an hour, two hours, 45 minutes, whatever you can fit. Diving into your prior week and prior month's trades and just see what you did. You know, even if you don't have an exact plan yet, you don't have perfect risk management, start journaling and analyzing it. Then you'll go back and look and be like, okay, I'm taking trades all over the place. This was in the direction of the trend. This was a counter trend trade. This is a breakout. This is a pullback. I want to I traded a chart pattern here. That, and then once you start getting samples and, and, you know, a sample size, like in statistics, you have uh, variables and samples that you're testing to see um, your overall performance. And that is what a journal is doing. And, uh... Hold on. George says, what are your takes on that, Corey? On what, man? Using all methods so you can trade every... I mean, look, I don't have anything against trading in the direction of the trend and counter trend in the same, you know, the same person. They're different styles and different strategies, the same person. As long as um, consolidation and break and pullbacks. Breakouts and pullbacks. Yeah, I mean, as long as you've tested the strategy, there's a million, there's endless, endless, endless ways to make money in, in trading. If you find a strategy, test it, and it's successful, right? And that's a lot easier said than done. It's not easy. But um, if you take a strategy and you test it and you take 250 trades and it's over an X amount of time period, so you know in different market environments it performs and you see that it, it's successful, I know guys who trade breakouts, pullbacks, and uh, you know double top, double bottom trend reversals. You know, there's there's um, you can trade trend. You could be a trend trader on the daily time frame, and then a counter trend scalper on the hourly trend direction. You know, there's there's a number of different ways to make money. As long as your strategy is following these things we're talking about here, you're using proper risk management. It's a strategy you've tested and and works, and you stick to it, and you have the discipline um, that really takes us to the main purpose of this video. Um, the main topic I wanted to cover in this video, which is what some people refer to as the cycle of doom and trading. Um, something I suffered for in the in the greater half of my trading. So this isn't something I got stuck at 
and stuck on right in the beginning of trading. In the beginning of trading, you're more getting stuck on wanting to learn every indicator, every technical analysis tool, every trading style. Um, you're just all over the place in the beginning trying to bring in knowledge, 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 knowledge. And then you start narrowing down your knowledge. You start realizing what's important. Maybe you get a good mentor or good guidance or a friend or somebody who helps guide you down the right path. And you start focusing on what's more important. And then you start becoming following a little bit of a strategy. Then maybe you start testing and following an actual strategy. And then the cycle you get into with the cycle of doom happens. And um, basically what happens is you go from here. Let me show you guys my screen real quick. I have a little image so um, here's the cycle of doom right so this is where we start we start right here with a strategy right we found a strategy we bought a strategy our friend showed us a strategy we developed our own strategy whatever the situation is to get you to this point right here you have a strategy right X Y and Z do, you know, A, B, and C happens, do D, right? You need you need a, an exact strategy with an exact trigger entering into the trade. Where is your stop loss? Where you take profits? When are you adjusting your stop loss to break even, if at all? When are you taking your first profit, your second profit? How are you trailing your stops? You know, all of this is in your, tra your strategy, um, which also should be included in this is your risk management, your journaling, your sessions you're trading, pairs you're trading, all that, right? Then we move into planning it out and trading it, right? We get this strategy... Uh, from uh, forextrader.com, whatever the hell you get it from. You get a strategy. You start to plan. You start to set it up and you know put your own little spin on it to fit your own lifestyle. You start to trade it. Maybe you have a few good trades. Maybe you have a few bad trades. Maybe it does good for a while. Maybe it just starts off horrible. But at some point in trading that strategy, you suffer losses. At some point in you using that plan and that strategy, you go through a drawdown phase and you lose a trade, two trades, three trades, five trades in a row, whatever it may be. You start to lose, and because it's happened so many times in the past with you losing, and you've struggled so much, and you've suffered so much, and you're so frustrated, you ditch the strategy. You say, screw this strategy. It sucks. It doesn't work. What did I waste my money on? What did I waste my time on? What is this idiot talking about that gave it to me? And you bail on it. You ditch it, and you go to right to the next strategy you find on Google, right? You go right to the next strategy you find online. You <clears throat> heard about whatever it may be, and the whole thing happens again. You find a new great, awesome strategy, so promising, looks great, 7,000 pips a second if you follow it with 100% strike rate, whatever. You plan it, you trade it, goes through some drawdown, you suffer some losses, your mind starts running, what am I doing, this tra strategy sucks, you ditch the strategy, you no longer trade the strategy, and you're back to square one, right? This happens over and over and over again with traders. I can't tell you the amount of people I've talked to and worked with that... That is what they say, right? Where they just have jumped and jumped strategy to strategy to strategy. Um, should be able to see. You know, it was just some words anyways. If <clears throat> you couldn't see it there, Paolo. Sorry, man. You should be able to see when I switch over here. <clears throat> but um, yeah, exactly, George. At the end of the day... Not that any strategy you're trading is or isn't the best strategy in the world, but um, at the end of the day, you are the only thing that matters with a trading strategy, right? So like I have a full course where I teach people my trading strategies and strategies I've developed, but like I tell everybody, no one strategy is good for X amount of people. Everyone's psychology is different. Everyone's schedule is different. Life experiences, everything. But having that plan and that guidance, sometimes you just need someone's strategy to get you started, right? Like the strategies I've developed over the years, I didn't create them from the ground up. I, I traded with a number of different proprietary trading firms. Um, one of them was Maverick Trading and they, they taught us a lot of different building blocks to build your own strategy, right? They gave you all the tools and, and teach you to build your own strategy. And that's pretty much what CoreFX course is. Um, you're given the building bots, you have trend analysis, support resistance, trend lines, moving averages, you have a number of different indicators, pivot points and parabolic SARS and ATR, RSI, you know, endless amounts. You got candlestick patterns, chart patterns, multiple different time frames. There's endless tools out there to build a strategy with. But you have to adapt it to yourself. 
You have to fit it to your lifestyle, to your psychology, to your risk management, to your everything. If, if you could have traders that love scalping, they're great at it. They don't have the patience to hold long-term trades. They need the high intensity in, out, in, out, in, out, right? And then you have traders that if they tried doing that, they would freak out. They couldn't get in and out of a trade that fast. They couldn't risk all their capital on a, or all their risk capital for that trade on a five pip move, sitting there behind a tick chart watching it. Um, and then there's people like me, like I can't open a trade. I cannot open a trade and hold it for a month, right? I, I just don't have that psychology and that, uh, I guess you could say discipline, but it's not even discipline. Like uh, I've never tried to get myself to that point because it's just fighting my psychology, right? I find that I'm my sweet spot is fi holding a trade from intraday to a few days, maybe a week or two weeks I can hold up to. But when you start getting into holding the trades for multiple weeks, uh, it, it doesn't work with me. And I know traders that do the opposite. They think I cannot open a trade and close it within a couple days or a week. I need to get in it and hold it for a period of months. Um, so everybody has their own differences, right? And the main thing that it comes down to is being disciplined across the board. Your routine, what you trade, what you're looking for, what your plan is, how much you risk per trade. Everything has to be disciplined. Everything has to be consistent. Right? If you're not consistent, you don't have a sample of trades to go back and analyze to determine if you're doing good or not. And I can tell you right now, there's a number of you in here who have already trade strategies that if you would have stuck with it, would have ended up working for you. Um, because what happens is you find a strategy, you trade it. It goes through losses, you stick with it, you see maybe there's a pattern to the losses. Maybe it's happening when you enter these trades in the Asian session because you get trapped out. Maybe... Um, if you took these setups, the exact same strategy, only in London Open, where there's a lot more follow through, maybe the trades would have worked out more often than not. Um, but all in all, nobody in the early phases gives strategies enough of a chance. Nobody sticks with them long enough to really see. If you get a strategy, and the other thing with starting a new strategy is a lot of people will, let's say the criteria are it's the third bounce to a trend line on a strong resistance with a 382 Fibonacci level and a candlestick pattern, right? Say that's the exact strategy that you short pair trades on. Every time that lines up, you short. A lot of times what people will do is they will fudge their strategy because they really want to get in the trade and they'll leave one of the, one of the criteria out. Or, ah, oh, that's not quite a bearish engulfing. It's just smaller than the candle. But I, I, I'm going to count it as bearish engulfing anyways. And I'm going to take that setup. Or, ah, oh, it's a 50% fib, but it's the third touch of the trend line. So that's good enough. It's close enough. These are the kind of things. That's not discipline. That's not consistency. If you're going to have a sample size of trades to see how it performed, you need consistency. You need every time there to be that, that exact criteria across the board to play out. Otherwise, you're just really hurting yourself. You're only, only hurting yourself. Let's see Nick's question. He said, I've been trading for a little over a year now and I finally started to see results even though my account isn't growing as fast as I'd like to. When you were at my point, did you ever find yourself in a situation that made you think about not trading anymore? Because I know a lot of people go through that cycle of thoughts of quitting. Oh man, the amount of times I wanted to quit trading and never look at a chart again over the last six years I've been doing this, I couldn't even tell you. Um, that's that's the beauty of it. That's the, the best part about it is making it through those points, right? It's, it's making it through the, the reason 95% of people don't make it in this business is because when that feeling happens, those 95% quit. When that feeling of getting kicked to the curb over and over and over and over again happens, that 95% quit. The 5% don't. They get back up, they pick their shit back up, they put their shit back together, and they keep on going. They keep on thinking... If 5% or if anybody out there can do it, why can't I? You know, if there's other people out there that have made their living off of this, there's other people out here that do this successfully, why can't you do that? And, and it, a lot of it just comes down to persistence. And there's actually uh, one of the companies I traded with, there's stats about um, traders and, you know, like the success rate of trading. And like with small businesses, I don't know if you guys have ever heard, like a small business's success rate, 80% um, of small businesses fail within the first I think it's a year or two years. And then small businesses that stay open longer than a year or two years, the success rate goes to 60%. Then over three years, it's 40%. Uh, so the longer you stay around, the longer, the higher the chances of succeeding in small businesses. 
And I heard similar statistics to that in trading. And it actually made sense to me because the emotional battles you go through in the first year, two years of trading, the people that stick with it, stick with it because they genuinely have the drive, have the passion for it, and, and have the challenge to themselves of making it, you know? The people that quit are the ones that are just fly by night and either trading's not for them, which is very possible and that's fine. You know, trading's not for everyone. Or they just didn't have the heart and the discipline to stick with it and keep going. Um, my breakthrough point where I really started to F the game up. Um, honestly, this this cycle of doom was the biggest change point. So throughout, before I stopped like jumping all over the place and stuff, I got to the break even point, you know, I was no longer losing money. I never really blew many accounts because from the beginning, I always had the mindset where I'd rather invest in like time and education. I, I start, I lost a few trades right off the bat and I was like, kind of like the way I am with casinos. Like I got friends that like the game, I'll go to the casinos. I don't at all. Um, and, and that's kind of how I felt with trading early on. Like I, I lost some money early on. I was like, what am I, like, I can try to learn this without just throwing money away. And, and, you know, people say trading is the only way to learn. And yeah, that's true. But for the early on times when, when friends of mine who have gotten into this and then quit eventually, um, blew so much money in the first times trading. So I didn't blow that much. I, I, I stuck with small amounts and spent my money on education. Um, and so I never really blew that much money, but once I started getting to that, like, you know, break even point where I wasn't really losing money anymore, I wasn't slowly eating away my accounts anymore. Like I was cruising. I'd go up a hundred bucks, I go down a hundred bucks. I go up five hundred bucks, I go down five hundred bucks. You know, and I just bouncing around that break even line. Um, once I really, I mean, the, the Maverick Trading Company that I started with is when things really changed for me because I was basically forced into um, the discipline of, of a professional trader. I had to start simul. I had the simulator trade. Um, uh, what's it called? I had the simulate trade so that there was a software we had where you would go on there and pull up a chart anytime in the last 10 years and pick a random spot and you'd go through candle by candle and create the candles as you go and test the strategy. I had the simulator trade. I had to first put a strategy together 15 pages of every single detail imaginable. Put a whole strategy together. Go back and back test it 250 times in this direction, 250 times in that direction. Um, demo it like crazy. Go through all kinds of testing phases. And really, I was forced into having an exact strategy and sticking with it over a period of time. And I started tweaking it and tweaking it and tweaking it. And I've still tweaked it to this day, my strategy. Similar style of trading I've had for the past four years, I'd say, that I've still tweaked to this day. That um, really the biggest thing that made me change my, my trading and my uh, every outlook and view on this was just sticking to one strategy putting everything I had into testing it and staying disciplined with it and going with it. Now, you can have a strategy that's awesome and written down and there, but the other side of the discipline comes in with this cycle of doom and bailing on strategies and all is that you don't actually follow it. You have a strategy, you have a um, exact plan, but like let's say for my strategies, for example, there's times when I don't have trades triggering my strategy and I have to just sit back and let the markets go until my strategy plays out. And a lot of times, earlier on traders or even traders let them trade in for a while or so, when that time period happens where their strategy is not triggering trades, they force themselves to find a trade because they're just, they love trading so much. They're, they're, they love that feeling of being in trade so much that instead of just sitting back and waiting for their strategy to come back and that high probability trade to set up for you, they just enter a trade because they saw an Instagram post or they talked to a friend or it looks really good technically. It's not their exact strategy, but it looks like a very good trade. Um, those are also things that every trader f suffers with. And those are the discipline sides of not just having a plan being important, but actually sticking to it. And if it's hard for you, have a second account that you throw those funky trades into, that you throw those one off, whatever this trade looked great trades into and have a strat an account specifically for your strategy so that you know exactly how it performs, right? And, and journal and log the trades and really just stick to it. But the, the biggest thing for me that changed the game was um, when I fully dove into a strategy, wrote it all down, got everything laid out and stuck with it and um, stopped abandoning strategies and moving on to the next best thing. 
that's what really, really changed the game for me and um, elevated my training to the next level. But really just having a, a set strategy and plan is what stopped me from losing money and, and really got me into, uh, you know, at least the break-even phase. But yeah, so um, really the biggest thing is to have a strategy and to, um, you know, make sure you're following it and you are um, just being disciplined, just just sticking to the exact plan and um, documenting and analyzing the trades, you know. So you want to um, know every single trade you make, what time zone it was in, uh, what triggered you in, you know, everything like that. And it's fine if you journal and in your journal you say, I took this trade, it wasn't my strategy. It didn't fit my plan, but I took it anyways um, because of this. And and that's what you want to make sure you're paying attention to because that's how you learn. You might be like, oh shit, I didn't follow my strategy. I'm not journaling that trade. That doesn't count. No. No, that's how you learn. That's how you take accountability for your mistakes because trading with how much discipline and psychology goes into it, accountability is huge. You have to be held accountable for your trades. And if you make a trade that's not your strategy, then you need to be able to journal it, document it, and when you go back and analyze, be like, shit, on Tuesday, you know, I made some great trades in the morning, and I should have been done for the day, but I kept trading because I was bored, and I gave back all the gains because I took this trade that didn't fit my strategy, or it was outside of the window of trading I'm supposed to trade. I only trade the New York Open, so if this trade triggered outside of it, and I took it that didn't fit my plan, journal that, because now you look back, and this week moving forward, you have a goal of an improvement to make. Okay, this week, I know last week I made a mistake and took a trade outside of my plan because of this. So this week, I'm not going to do it. And now you're focused. You have a, something to keep your mind set on. You have a problem that you can improvise and a step further towards improving your game. It's like anything else in life. Going to the gym. If any of you guys have worked out before, uh, when you first start working out, it's discouraging. It's tough. It's hard. You're learning what you're doing, everything like that. But the second you start seeing gains, the second you start realizing you're curling 10 pounds more every few weeks. Your, um, you know, your chest and triceps and, and biceps are starting to be a little more defined. As soon as you start seeing improvement, you're hooked, right? Now you want to go every day. You want to go like crazy. And, and what used to be something you didn't want anything to do with is now something you love. Same with trading. If you're continuing to document your results and keep track of your results and improving and you're seeing things like that, gaps in your strategy and style like that, and you're taking advantage of them and you're improving them week to week, it's going to make you so much more hooked on trading, it's not even funny. And you're going to be hooked on the better part, the self-improvement side of it. The, I want to get better as a trader and as a person, so I'm going to do this this week to make up for what I did wrong last week. I'm going to fix this with my stitch strategy because it messed me up last week. And you just continue to improve. And you stick with that system and that strategy no matter what it is. Just stick with it for a while. Give it three months. right? Just challenge yourself today, right now. Write down a strategy. No matter how basic, uh, don't do, you know, on the hourly chart when you get a reversal candle on a, a SMA. You can do that, but I would recommend doing a little more in depth. Maybe pick a, you know, a trending time frame. Pick the, the daily time frame, trade in that direction of the trend, and then on the hourly, find a breakout. Whatever your criteria may be. Um, just make sure you focus on following something in detail, documenting it, and looking back. And you will see quickly how you can improvise your trading. Um, you really, really need to just focus on these things and, and really dive into it. Um, yeah, George, you're totally right, man. The, the amount of gains you're making doesn't matter. It's developing the skill set, getting that consistency down, and, and being able to um, either grow your capital and compound interest until you have an account big enough to mess with, or um, like the route I've done, go into prop trading firms, people that have, have capital that can fund you, and um, you know they get a cut of your profits, but you perform, you perform, and, and you get funded. Um, so that that's, that's huge. That's huge right there. Yeah, George, uh, shoot me a message if you want to talk about some things, and you know, I might be able to help you out. I know, um, trading companies and things of that nature. But um, yeah, for anybody who hasn't seen it yet, um, this right here that you're seeing, this is the free 
signal week trial that we've got going on here at Core Effects now. So we have a Telegram chat where we share our trades that we take all week long. We share our analysis of the trades. We have weekly webinars. Um, there's a video library of educational videos and all. But we are now doing a free trial, one week free trial to anybody who hasn't tried it before. Um, give it a shot if you guys are interested in, in signing up. You know, the link is on there, on that offer. Um, just click it on there. Shoot me a message if you want to give it a shot for your week. Check out the room, see how we're doing, um, and go from there. But uh, also, you know, if you're struggling looking for a strategy, you're str struggling looking for guidance, um, how to build a strategy, what exactly needs to be in a trading plan, you know, because uh, it, it's easy to say you need a trading plan, but if you've never built one before and you don't know exactly what needs to be in it, it can be hard. Um, uh, yes, the technical training room, Nick. Um, I just can't wait to show my friends and family that tell me to get a real job that this works. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, that's that's one of the big motivations to it. You know, when when people doubt and people, uh, you know, throw dirt on what you're trying to do because they don't get it or believe in it. Um, but yeah, there's a, uh, you know, there's there's gonna be there's gonna be haters all throughout your journey. And um, yeah, just prove them wrong. Uh, that's that's all you gotta do. It's just prove them wrong. Um, but yeah, and, and again, if you guys are looking for guidance with the plan, with the trading plan, with all that stuff, um, there I do have a full course. You know, like I was saying, there's a full course that I have created. One of the things that I noticed over the time of, like I said, I spent a lot of money on education through my journey of trading. Um, one of the things that I noticed was that there was a huge gap in the trading out there from the um, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollar courses that the big time companies now have, and then the get rich quick scheme, scammy, lower end um, of the spectrum courses. I just saw a massive void between the two of them. You know, there was no quality education out there for affordable prices. So I just took what I could um, and made my own course that really just summarizes how professional prop firms teach their traders that are going to be trading their capital. So it teaches you how to develop your own plan using all the different building blocks of technical analysis, fundamental analysis. I got news trading strategies in there, um, exact strategies I've developed and tested that I encourage students to transfer into their own just using my principles. Um, show you guys how to journal, how to exact, I have an exact trading plan outline that I give you that shows you exactly what criteria need to be on a trading plan. I have portions where I review your trading plan, give feedback, all that. So, you know, if you're looking for that guidance, um, that that extra help to help just guide you along the path, it, it's going to take... Um, uh, uh, George, thanks, bro. I appreciate that, man. Four years later, there you go. Your odds of succeeding have gone up tenfold over uh, people that get into this and then quit because... It's the longevity, man. It's the people that have the guts and the courage to stick with it, um, to fall down, continue to get back up. Exactly. And yeah, and at this point, man, you look back and you're like, shit, if I've gone through everything I've gone through, how can I stop now? You know, how can I, with all the times I've been knocked the hell down, why am I going to stop now? It's like that picture I'm sure you've seen a million times with the guys digging for gold and there's two guys next to each other. You know, the one guy stops right before he hits the gold. And it's like, you know, that it cost me. Hey, it's going to, there's sacrifices you got to take, bro. It's not an easy journey. It's cost me a lot of things, but stick with it, man. Because it's created so much more in my life than it's taken away. It's not even funny. So just stick with it. Anyone, everyone. Yeah, man, I'm with you. <laughs> Oh man, George, <laughs> you're wild, but hey, exactly, if they're not there to support you, I've been with the same girl for six years, we're getting married next year, she's been with me since the beginning of me trading, and for a while there, she thought I was batshit crazy, she still thinks I'm batshit crazy, but she's she's stuck with me through it all, she don't know the first thing about trading, but she'll, she'll support me to the end and back, and uh, that that's, I got lucky, I got real lucky with that, but that's that's how it is, if they're not going to support you, if they're not going to be there to help you and to encourage you and to help you through them dark times that are there, um, you don't need them in your life. There's how many billions of people in the world? If they're just going to 
throw you down and drag you down and not be a light to help push you on and guide you on. See you later. The wedding, it's next, it's almost exactly a year from now, next October 19th. Thanks, guys, appreciate it. Yeah, I definitely, definitely got lucky. What's up, Andres? <laughs> um, I'm calling on you so your question can be answered. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, you hear that in any self-improvement, any, uh, you know, success, anything like that, you are a product of who you surround yourself with, you know, um, and you got to surround yourself with winners, man. You got to, if, if they're not, see ya, dump them <laughs> like George does. Just, uh, you know, surround yourself with the people that matter. Focus on what matters. Hey, I'll take the high five. That works too. Raised hand, high five. Same thing. But, um, you yeah, guys, anyone else have any other questions? <laughs> anyone else have anything else they want to go over? Um, I just wanted to share, you know, some of the things that, that I found really, really pivotal in, in my training journey and, and that cycle of doom. But I never realized it until I saw, I don't even remember who I saw another trader years ago talk about that same cycle of doom. And I remember scratching my head like, holy shit, is this guy like following me every day? Does this guy like have access to my internet and my computer and my trading accounts and shit? Like, how does this guy know that's exactly what I'm doing? And I just remember being like, God damn, if only I could just, you know, stick to something and, and, and like follow through with that plan and that strategy. Maybe, maybe I can trade the circumstance, change the circumstances of my life and where I'm at. So that was huge. And if I can get even just one person to heed that advice and, and make a change in their trading, then, then this video and this webinar was worth it. But um, I will be uploading this video. Uh, CMT is going good. I actually pushed back taking the first phase just because everything going on with the company and expanding things, um, the trading firm I'm with and all, just didn't have time to study for it as much as I'd like to. Um, still got it though. And... Uh, definitely still going to follow through with it eventually, but that's just another one of those things. It's just another thing to, to learn and add to the toolbox. It's all technical analysis and, and, uh, trend analysis and all that stuff that I've been learning for years that, you know, I know up and down, but it's just another, you know, toolbox, uh, another tool in the box, another bit of knowledge to have. So I read different books all the time, different styles and strategies and things all the time. It's just, you know, some of the greatest minds in technical analysis came together to create that curriculum. So, it's just another thing to help benefit the, the brain, help learn some more knowledge. But, um, yeah, if anyone else has any questions, anything else they want to go over, just let me know. Otherwise, I will hang it up here. You guys know where to find me. If anyone has any questions, I'll throw my email here too. But I'm sure you guys all have it. Or have access to it. Um, check out the website, corefxtraining.com. If you guys want to try that free trial, that one week free trial to our signal analysis room, it's free. Give it a shot. Again, it's right here. Just click on that link and fill out the form in the page. Um, but uh, yeah, we give, we give the trade alerts, 24 7 updates on the trades, weekly webinars, video library, there's a trading community. Um, all that's included. If anyone wants to give it a shot for free, check it out. Come see what we're all about. Um, Otherwise, guys, I appreciate it. Appreciate y'all taking the time to come by this webinar. I hope you guys got something out of it. Again, if, if even one of you guys helped something out, then uh, improve your trading from this even a little bit, then it was all worth it. Lifetime membership gives us free two months of the signals. Yeah. Yep. Exactly, Nick. So um, what, what I have recommended and what people have done um, is if you sign up for the two months, I mean, if you sign up for the full course, um, what I would recommend is not starting your two month free of the signal room right away. I can, I can postpone that two months free to whenever and, uh, really dive into the videos. There's over 50 videos in there, uh, 30 some odd lessons, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of videos. It, it, it's really a ton of content to go through. Um, so you might be a little distracted trying to go through all the content while trying to keep up with the signal room and the trade alerts and all that stuff. And you might, 
you know, want to dive through my trading first so that when you see the alerts, you can understand where they're coming from and a little more into the background of how I'm coming up with those trade alerts. Um, but yeah, you could start the two months right away or you can delay them. I, I recommend delaying them, but it, you know, it's totally up to you to uh, see what you want to do. But there's uh, two weeks to come free with that. Otherwise, it's it's just a month to month thing. But there's still two free weeks. I mean, there's still the free week trial to try it out um, for anyone that's interested in that. Awesome, man. Yeah, Nick, there's a, a I'll shoot you the link to it if you want offline. But um, there's a whole section of my site that goes over exactly what lessons are covered in the trading uh, in the um, uh, course. So you can see exactly what's covered. I mean, it doesn't show obviously the details. There's written material. There's audio material. There's quizzes so that you know I can grade your your analysis of the stuff. There's tons of videos. Um, it just shows the topics, the general topics that are covered, so you can see, you know, what is in it. But all right, guys. Anyone else has any questions or anything? Just reach out to me if you guys have need any help with your trading in any way, student of mine or not. Just reach out. Um, if you're stuck in this cycle of doom and you need some tips help outside this video how to get out of it please just reach out to me let me know i can help you in any way possible